so much part of living in your world. See what you did for me. You gave me something I want everyone to see. When we stumble and it all goes wrong, only you can make it right. So I say, Welcome to worship tonight. Good morning. Pastor Gina Maria Coberl, and I'm your interim pastor here at Messiah. And uh, today is Pentecost Sunday, so we will uh, be celebrating the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, and speaking a lot about it today. So um, I invite you to pray as we invite and acknowledge God's presence among us. Gracious God, we, we acknowledge that you are here with us, and we celebrate today the promise and fulfillment of that promise of your spirit to be present in us and with us and through our lives. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing. Oh, let's pray. I'm not sure. <laughs> sing. Thanks a little bit. 
Let, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Almighty and merciful God, you established your church with the power of the Holy Spirit. Fill us with the sacred fire that we may ignite with a passion for your will. Inflame our hearts to do good works in the building of your church. Finally, burn down the walls that keep us from you. These things we ask in your name. Amen. And now receive the forgiveness of your sins by the power of Jesus Christ, who died for you, who rose and gave you the promise of a new life and of a spirit-filled life. In Jesus' name, amen.
Our reading today is taken from Acts, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared upon them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one of her heard them speaking in their native language. Amazed and astonished, they ask, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's power, deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The peace of Jesus Christ be with you all. Please share that peace with one another. So at this time, I invite the children to come forward for children's time. I'm going to come up. Anybody's up here? Hi. You guys can just kind of gather around. Yeah, you can have a seat there. That's good. All right. Well, today is Pentecost. And that is, as you may have heard in the reading, a day when the Spirit came to the disciples and they were given power to do things they hadn't been able to do before, like speak in languages they didn't know. And they could do this so that they could teach about Jesus and tell people about Jesus. And the thing is, is we receive the Spirit in us since that day. In fact, in our baptism, that's one of the things we receive in our baptism, is that the Holy Spirit comes and lives within us, dwells within us. And I want to show a little what that's like. So I have a flashlight here, and it's pretty bright. 
And in order for this flashlight to work, to give me light, it has to have batteries, right? If it doesn't have the batteries, then it stops shining. So it's got batteries here. There we go. Got some batteries in there. And with batteries, I got a shining light. Well, in his Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, Let your light so shine that people will know through your good works and recognize and celebrate God in heaven. And the Spirit comes and lives with us to give us the courage so that we can grow in our faith, so that we can talk about God to people and learn and teach. And that's all with the power of the Spirit. It's kind of like our battery and it helps us to shine. All right? So I'm going to ask you to pray with me. And you'll just repeat after me, okay? Dear God, thank you for your spirit living in us so that we can tell others about Jesus and let our light shine. Amen. All right, thank you. So some of you know, I grew up in Minnesota. I grew up in a farm in a farming area, and my brother-in-law, his parents farmed, and my brother-in-law farms the family farm. And one day I went over to his parents' house, and uh, it didn't look like anybody was around the house. So I got out of the car, and I walked across the yard to the machine shed to see if someone was down by the shed. Now, my brother-in-law's parents had a watch goose, And so as I started walking across the yard, the goose got whiff of me and came flapping its wings, honking, beak snapping, and was going to, you know, chase the intruder away. Now, first I froze, because if you ever have a goose chasing you, wild or domestic, it is pretty freaky. And I then began to run because I realized this goose meant business. The nearest escape route I could find was a ladder up the side of the green drying bin. And so I climbed up the ladder and I stayed there until someone could come and call the goose off. And I tell you that story because it came to mind one day when I was reading about Celtic Christians. Now, those are the early Christians of Britain and Ireland, around 500, or I mean 400. And they had an image for the Holy Spirit that was a bird. But it is not the bird image that you see everywhere. (laughs) I see the dove over there, there's a dove over there, there's a dove over there and there. We usually use that dove image um, because of interpretation of of Jesus' baptism. They had an image of a wild goose. And I think that is far more fitting for the Holy Spirit than a dove. When you think about how the disciples were perceived on Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came upon them. What did people say? What did they think was going on? What did they think? What did they say? They're drunk. Yeah, they're being drunk and disorderly. Think of people that you've seen being drunk and disorderly. That is not a calm cooing dove. That is a wild honking goose of a celebration, intoxicating joy, and a kind of wild freedom. The Holy Spirit confounds our expectations, slips through restrictive ideas, 
and opens new doors for God's people. That's what the Spirit does. So, if the Spirit is so noticeable, more like a beak-snapping, honking, raucous, wild goose, why is it that mainline Christians primarily only talk about the Spirit on Pentecost? And then we get very quiet, and we don't talk about it again. Jurgen Moltmann, who is a theologian, he posed uh, the idea, he called the Holy Spirit the shy member of the Trinity. When he said this, I don't think he necessarily meant that the Spirit was shy, because the Spirit is not shy. But we are shy to speak about the Spirit. It is the great paradox of the Spirit. You see, the Spirit is noticeable and life-changing, and yet we are the shyest to speak about it. Moltmann poses maybe this is because it's easier to identify with a creator and with Jesus because we can physically experience them, right? We can see creation, and it's easy to conceive of a creator. We can connect with that. And Jesus, well, as the church, we are in the body of Christ, right? And then Jesus was also incarnate, embodied. And so we can connect with that. But the Spirit, the Spirit is a force that cannot be contained. The Spirit is God fully present. It's a power. It's an energy. The Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, one God with the Father and the Son. We confess that in our confessions. And the Spirit is mysterious and fully active and constantly on the move like the wind and cannot be grasped. To illustrate how the Spirit works in us and in our lives, because as I mentioned earlier, in baptism, we believe the Holy Spirit comes and dwells within us. That means God lives in us, dwells in us, makes a home in us. That's pretty amazing. And that is the Spirit. It's because of Pentecost, because of this day when the Spirit came and that promise was fulfilled that Jesus made, that we can experience that. And I want to show you what that experience is, what it is to have the Spirit dwell in us. And so to do so, a lot of you got balloons, and I want you to take your balloons out. All right, this balloon right now is kind of blah. It is not really uh, inspired, inspirited. (laughs) It is kind of dead. And we can feel that way in our faith. We can feel that way in our lives. We can feel at times very depressed, decompressed. We can struggle with our grief and with health and broken relationships, and it can make us feel kind of limp. But we are told in the Bible that the Spirit comforts us, shows compassion and care when we're feeling like this. The Bible tells us the Spirit intercedes when we don't know what to pray or how to pray. We know that the Spirit comforts us, gives strength, gives healing, gives peace, and most importantly, leads to hope. And this is what it kind of looks like. Another way of talking about the Spirit is to say the breath of God. So I want you to blow these up. I do not want you to tie them or let them go. Just blow them up and imagine the breath being the breath of God filling you up. All right. 
So what happens to the balloon when you fill it up with the breath? Yeah. It gets bigger, right? Pushes your edges, pushes your limits, fills you up, expands you. Yeah, you change. The shape changed, didn't it? Right? Now, I want you to hold up your balloon, and then when I count to three, I want you to let go. One, two, three. <laughs> let it go. <laughs> so... What can we learn about the spirit from these balloons? When you let it go, did the balloon stay in one place? No. <laughs> it flew somewhere. And that's like the Holy Spirit, active, always on the move. When you let it go, did, the, do, did you know where the, whole, where the balloon was going to end up? No. No. And do you, does anyone know, like, where their balloon went and could pick out which one is theirs? Some of you probably could, but many of you probably not. Again, the Holy Spirit is unpredictable. We don't know what it's going to do or where the Spirit is going to lead to us when we let the Spirit go inside. We can be surprised in wonderful ways. So what did you hear when we let go of the balloons? Besides that, what else did you hear? Laughter. Another sign of the Spirit is joy. The Spirit brings excitement, intoxicating joy. Laughter, fun. Because the Spirit leads to hope. Joyful, noisy, out of control. That's the spirit. And another thing about the spirit is it's going to stick with you like glue. Right? You're never alone. When people ask, where's God? You can point right here. Because the spirit lives in you. That is the gift we receive. Giving us the power to let our light shine. God taking root, giving meaning to our lives. So the Spirit knows our future better than we can predict our future. And why I want to talk about the Spirit as we are in this time of transition as a congregation to pray the Spirit be upon us and in us and guide and lead us. And that may mean our balloons go in places we didn't expect them to. It may mean we get surprised. It may mean fun. It may mean some joyful experiences, some excitement. We don't know. But let us pray that the Spirit truly inspire this process of transitions. So, it is no shy member of the Trinity we're talking about today, but a honking wild goose that'll jar you out of your complacencies and a great helper from God, a bringer of joy, a bringer of hope, and God dwelling within you. And that is one holy goose of a revelation. Amen.
We stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He Together we sing Everyone All the years of the Lord, God Almighty, the earth is filled with this glory. All the years of the Lord, God Almighty, the earth is filled with this glory. The earth is filled with this glory. We stand. Let us join in prayer for our church and the world and for all in need. We pray, come, Holy Spirit, and fill us with your love. Open our eyes to see the presence of God all around us. Help us to see your presence in the stillness, in the busyness, in the noise. May we see you in joys and celebrations of our lives, as well as in tragedies and struggles that break our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, come, Holy Spirit. We pray you comfort those who grieve. Bring peace to those in mental and emotional unrest. Stir within us a trust in life beyond death. Fill us with hope. Renew our minds with your wisdom, Lord, in your mercy. Come, Holy Spirit, inspire people of every land and language, every nation to seek peace. End violence, warfare, and ethnic strife. Lead us from fear to friendship, from injustice to equality, from oppression to freedom, Lord, in your mercy. Come, Holy Spirit, bring wholeness to the sick. Strengthen those who are weak and heal the wounded or broken. Give rest to the weary. Comfort those who are neglected or abused, those who are unemployed, those who struggle with addiction. Lord, in your mercy. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless those who work with children. 
those discerning a call to ministry and all the baptized. Bless visitors, new members, those who are absent from us today. We pray you transform our hearts and our minds. Fill us with your love that overflows. Remind us that there is no greater calling than to love you with all our hearts and all our minds and all our bodies and love our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, in your mercy. We join the voices of all the faithful and every time we meet and praise you, we offer up these prayers in the name of the risen one, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, gathered with his disciples, and he took bread and he blessed it and he gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do so for the remembrance of me. Whenever we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we do so remembering that Christ died, Christ risen, and Christ shall come again. And let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in, in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The table is prepared that you may receive this meal of forgiveness. The ushers will let you know on which side to come forward. You'll receive the bread or gluten-free if you would like that. And uh, you will receive wine or grape juice. Um, just ask for what you would like. Let us eat.
invite you to, you can stand and uh, hold the hand of the person next to you as a sign of receiving this blessing together as a community. And now may you be strengthened and empowered by this meal of grace and forgiveness that Christ has given you. Amen. And I invite you to receive the blessing of benediction. May God, our creator, our savior, and guiding, exciting spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
spark to start a whole place. It only takes a little faith that it start right here in Springfield. So these old walls will never be the same over and over again. But I hear your voice in my head. They need to know, I need to go. Spirit, won't you fall on my mind? Now start a fire. Start a fire in my soul, fan the flame, make it grow. 